Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. We're so glad you've joined us today on Facebook Live. We're a center of radical inclusiveness, spiritual renegades who heal hearts and expect everyone to live in their own abundancy. And so today we begin with prayer. Settling in, feeling that connection with the divine, letting go of whatever is uh, disturbing us at the moment and just recognizing that we are here in community, be it online, to join with our spirits, to feel that connection within ourselves. Uh, today, as we weed our garden of negative thoughts, what I know to be the truth is that everyone watching, whether here or later, is inspired to truly begin with the thought in mind that God is for us. And that there is in us that ability to live through whatever's going on in our lives with ease and grace and peace and calm. So I am so grateful. I'm grateful for Veronica and Robin who have opened their homes so that we could do this Facebook Live. I'm grateful to Bill who showed up so that we can have music today. And I'm grateful for everyone that's a part of this community supporting it with their times, talents, and treasures. And from all that gratitude, I release this into the world of law, knowing that the actions that have been taken have already done. So I say amen, and we affirm it together, and so, so it is. is. Okay. So Bill's going to lead us in Get Ready, My Soul. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of life, to the sweetest kind of love. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won, everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the precious moment here, to a new beginning here. And I'm seeing life so clearly. In, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the sweetest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. So we're going to get ready today and ready our soul by starting with meditation. Ah, so we take a deep nourishing breath and enjoy this intro. you to release any thoughts of the outside world. 
move into your heart. Become aware of your breathing and awaken to only this present moment. There's a beautiful quote from Ernest Holmes, our founding father, that states this. Some part of you exists as pure, unmanifest spirit. So as it continue to breathe, allow yourself to imagine pure, unmanifest spirit fashioned from the stuff of the invisible. Imagine what you might be capable of doing and who you might be if you aligned yourself with that pure spirit. I invite you this morning as you take each breath to do just that, to align yourself with spirit, to know that at the very center of your being, there is a divine presence that flows through you that is real, that is manifesting to the degree that you embrace it. I invite you to consider believing with every cell of your being that you are made of the stuff of the invisible, that there is within you a spirit that knows exactly what to do in every situation in every moment of the day. So in the silence, open the door to the divine. Align yourself with the wisdom, the understanding, the faith and the calm that accepting the love of the divine in all situations allows. we return from the silence, bring back what you noticed about what you're capable of doing and who you might become when you accept yourself as pure, unmanifest spirit fashioned from the stuff of the invisible. Notice how you felt as you accepted that at the very center of your being, there's a divine presence that flows through you impelling you to act in ways that align with your highest good. I invite you to allow the divine to continue to pour through you throughout the day, throughout the week to come, so you become a willing vessel for wisdom, peace, and calm. Alleluia, alleluia. in
for us today from March 22nd and 365 Science of Mind. Good morning. So today's reading is called Omnipresence. The universe is a spiritual system of complete consciousness, entire wholeness, the sum total of which is present everywhere. We are both scientifically and inspirationally, spiritually and philosophically in accord with the great intuitions, the spiritual revolution, revelations of all the ages that have announced that God is over all, in all, through all, and is all. There is not God and something else. There is only God, and God is in everything constituting the only reality to anything that is, proclaiming itself as all things. Therefore, God knows things only as itself. At the very center of my own being, I realize the divine presence. At the center of my own consciousness, I recognize a transcendent principle forever animating, sustaining, vitalizing, recreating, guiding, directing, inspiring. There is within me that which knows what to do and impels me to act in accord with its perfect law and order and its complete peace. This I accept. And even as I affirm it, I know that this omnipresence is alive and awake and aware within me. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Bill is going to transition us here into the talk. I don't know about you, but I'm so much happier that we have music this week. <laughs> ah. So today our topic is weeding the garden. And last week I was talking about moving from fear to faith in all situations, allowing faith to be so strong that we know that there's no spot where God is not. And whatever is taking place within us in this physical world that everything really is in divine order. And that's uh, a lot easier said than done. So today, I want to continue that journey by talking about weeding the garden. Now, I always have a question for you. So the question this week is, what's the one choice that you can make so that when fear arises, you remember you are fashioned from the stuff of the invisible. What's the one choice you can make so that when fear arises, you can remember that you are fashioned from the stuff of the invisible? Now, it's probably no shock that I'm going to use a garden analogy since the title is Weeding the Garden. <laughs> but I want to be really upfront. This is not about really learning how to weed your garden. I didn't inherit my mom's green thumb. I have to hire people to weed my gardens. So we're going to talk about weeding the garden of our soul. There's a power that we speak about quite a bit in Science of Mind, and it's that power of our thoughts to create situations that we desire. Sometimes we say thoughts are things. Sometimes we say what you think about, you bring about. Our founder reminds us, we all use the creative power of the universal mind every time we use our own mind. 
We all use the creative power of the universal mind every time we use our own mind. So that's an awesome power. And it seems prudent that we would use it wisely and mindfully in an intelligent way. And weeding the garden is a powerful metaphor on many, many levels. We're talking about the garden of our mind, where we plant our thoughts, which is our, the seeds of what happens in our lives. And if we plant healthy seeds, powerful seeds, seeds of limitless possibility, wow, that's what we get. But what happens is, when we plant seeds of lack, of limitation, of weakness, of fear, to no surprise, that's what starts springing up into our lives. So weeding the garden of our minds is about weeding out those negative thoughts that fail to produce what we want so that we can have those positive thoughts that produce a life where we're living in joy and happiness. A few weeks ago, we talked about ants in your pants and the fact that the law responds to our positive or negative thoughts. And we certainly want uh, don't want to be watering the weeds of negative thoughts, those weeds of our automatic negative thoughts. So we're going to talk about how do we avoid that particular process. Someone once joked that the best way to garden is to put on a wide brimmed hat and some old clothes and with a hoe in one hand and a cold drink in the other, tell somebody else where to dig. <laughs> So you might think that that doesn't work very well when we're trying to weed out those negative thoughts in our minds, but I would, uh, I would say that the analogy is really good. When we put on a wide brim hat and we take that cold drink in our hand, what we're doing is keeping ourselves from getting sunburned and keeping ourselves from uh, getting into that space where our body is not healthy. And water actually flushes out all of the uh, bad situations within our body. It flushes out those bad chemicals. So the wide brim hat in the water are actually ways to keep ourselves healthy. And when we feel better, we are more inclined to think more positive thoughts. Now, it also might help, help to have somebody else around. Now, you can't exactly uh, tell them where to dig unless you know where the weeds are. And has anybody ever noticed that your friends seem to notice when you're out of kilter? They seem to notice when your mood isn't the way it normally is and they start asking you, are you okay? <laughs> so it does help to have somebody else, but to tell, be able to tell them where to dig you have to know where your negative thoughts are. You have to actually be willing to look at where are the roots of those thoughts. And only we are conscious of where our negative self-talk is. Where are our own fears and doubts? What do we need to uh, get rid of? What are those doubts that we keep rehearsing in our minds over and over again? Where are the times that we are focusing on worst case scenario? And we're the ones that know that. So our meditation today was about recognizing the divine presence that was in each of us, about the importance of learning to feel that presence, allowing us to really settle in to know, like what I said last week, that God is always for us and recognizing that we're made of the stuff of the invisible, that it's the truth of who we are, is how we learn to recognize the weeds. Because anything that's not the truth of who we are, that we would consider to be like spirit or like God, allows us to say, well, those must be the weeds. I wonder where the roots are so that I can dig them up. What I said in the meditation was actually a part of a longer quote, and I'd like to read that whole quote because the whole quote is really quite powerful. 
Your place in life is to become an outlet for spirits, wisdom, intelligence, love, beauty, and creativeness. Some part of you exists as pure, unmanifest spirit. Since you are fashioned from the stuff of the invisible, its nature is incarnated in you. Because of this, your word has the power in your world of localizing itself, of manifesting itself in concrete form. Your word has the power of manifesting in concrete form. And it's not just your positive words, it's your word. So if we truly believe that our word has the power of localizing itself within us and of manifesting in some concrete form, it's time for us to get out there and weed our gardens. Figure out what it is that we can do to eliminate the weeds. And there's a lot of things. First of all, you have to recognize where are the weeds. What is it that you're thinking? Where do you have self-doubt? Where do you have uh, less than full respect for yourself? Where are you living in a space of lack or limitation or uh, anything that's less than the invisible stuff that you're made of? And once you recognize that, use some of the tools that you have. Get out your full toolbox. We have a huge gardening toolbox. Positive affirmations. Affirmative prayer. Meditation. I like to sing. I like to play the piano. Those are the ways that I connect with spirit. For some people, it's reading a spiritual passage, like the one we read today from the 365 Science of Mind. It's a little daily book that every day has amazing little passages for us to think about and to move through our day with. They're great weed killers, all of those. Still and they're busy. powerful ways to keep our mental garden in order. Mm -hmm. They produce beautiful results. What we do is we create a garden so that we can have these beautiful flowers, right? So who wants to plant a garden where the flowers are gonna come up looking like weeds? So there's this affirmation from the way of mastery that I sometimes like to use. And I'm going to uh, speak it now so that you can see the power of it. I allow the mind of God to flow through me, carrying me to an ever greater expansiveness and deepening my awareness of the infinite loveliness of the power of the mind of God. So I'm going to say it one more time, and I just invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you, and just listen to the power of this little affirmation. I allow the mind of God to flow through me, carrying me to an ever greater expansiveness and deepening my awareness of the infinite loveliness of the power of the mind of God. Wow. Now when we can become conscious of allowing the power of the mind of God to flow through us, we can get rid of those weeds really, really quickly because we'll know exactly where the weeds are and we'll be able to pull them up, roots and all, so that they don't come back. Social activist Dorothy Day wrote this. We plant seeds that will flower as results in our lives. So best to remove the weeds of anger, avarice, envy, and doubt, such that peace and abundance may manifest for all. It sounds like a great way for us to have a world that works not only for us, but that works for everybody that's a part of this planet. And I want to bring this analogy a little bit further. I want to actually um, talk a little bit about the questions that I ask every week that always says, what's the one choice you might make today? And the reason that I use that is because I read this book and we actually did a, uh, a whole series on it at one point a couple of years ago and it's called The One Thing, The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. It's written by Gary Keller. 
And his premise is that we don't have too many things to do, we just do too many things. <laughs> and in doing that, he talks about several lies that are, that we really truly believe as a culture. And I wanna uh, go through a few of those because the good news is that with all that we're bombarded with, with technology, we have limitless opportunities and possibilities right now in our lives to take advantage of. The not so good news is that we are bombarded in one day with more information than our ancestors received in a lifetime. Think about that. In one day, we get more information than our ancestors got in a whole lifetime. Now that brings about some challenges of how we go about looking at all that information that's coming in and sifting it so that we can take in what's going to serve us and let go of the rest. How can we take in only that that's gonna serve us and, and let go of the rest? How can we be so mindful of our focus that we can realize the power of the mind of God? Because the outward appearance of our, of our lives reflect what we're feeling on the inside. I don't know about you, but when I'm not feeling so well, there is not a smile on my face. And when I'm in a good mood, I go around smiling and chatting with people, and which is why your friends always know when you're not up to par because they notice the change in your behaviors. So the first slide that he talks about is that everything equals, matters equally. And we go around sometimes thinking that, oh, this matters and that matters. We have a long to-do list. We put on our work gloves and we want to you know, work from a sense of priority. Uh, we do a whole lot of things that are uh, feel urgent and important right here and right now. And the truth is, as he looked at this, is that achievers operate differently than that. They don't operate like everything is equally important or matters equally. They weed out the less important task and only work on the more important ones, the ones that are gonna make a difference. So instead of a to-do list, what if we purposely made a list that said, what's gonna bring about extraordinary, extraordinary results in my life? Would that change how you looked at things? What's the one thing right now that's important for me to know? What's the one thing that's important for me to do right now? Avoiding the checkoff list, and hey, I'm guilty of that. I do make to-do lists, and it's like, oh yeah, I got to check that off. <laughs> but it's not always that I'm focusing my attention on what's the most important. And the part of that that's important is once we realize that one thing that we should focus our attention on right now, it's to say no to everything else. Now, hey, I was brought up Southern. No is not a word that comes out of my mouth very easily. <laughs> but if you really want to pull those weeds out of your to-do list and really do some gardening, there's a question that you can focus on. And here it is. What's the one thing I can do today such that doing it, everything else becomes unnecessary or easier? Hmm. What's the one thing I can do today such that doing it, everything else becomes unnecessary or easier? So for me this, this week, my one thing every day was how can I create a message that's gonna help us get through this time of the COVID-19 information bombardment that's coming in through the news, that's creating a whole different lifestyle for a lot of us. We don't have the freedom to which we've become accustomed in this, in this United States. We're moving about in a different way. Uh, we go to Costco and there's these blue lines that you have to stand behind and people are trying to keep their distance from each other, which is fine because when we're in a state of fear, we need to do the things that are gonna have us feel like we can stay healthier and stay safe. But the question would be, what's the one thing I can do such that everything else becomes unnecessary 
are easier. And for me, when I move into that state of fear, the way I get rid of those weeds is to say, oh, maybe I just need to pray right now that everybody in the United States stays healthy, that everybody in the world moves through this situation of health right now in a way that is divinely guided. The second lie is that willpower is always on will call. <laughs> If I just had enough willpower, I could get rid of those negative thoughts. If I just had enough willpower, I could lose those 30 pounds I want to lose. If I just had enough willpower, whatever your thing is. Willpower actually has a limited battery life. It's all about energy. There was a research study done of uh, judges that uh, paroled people. And the research was actually done in... Uh, conjunction with the Stanford Business School and a university in Israel. And it was the Israeli judges, and they had a very, very long day, and they only got lunch and a break. And what they noticed was that as their energy declined, they were more likely to fall back on the safe option, which was, no, you can't have parole. But early in the morning, if you happen to have a hearing early in the morning, the likelihood that you get parole was much higher. <laughs> so that tells us that there was more willpower for them and more focusing in times after break, after lunch, and early in the morning. So it's not about willpower. They were making decisions the best they could. But when we feel like we're tired or we don't have as much energy, we tend to fall back on the things that used to work, whether or not they really used to work or not. We just think they used to work. But we fall back on those things of thoughts that feel comfortable in our mind. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to encourage you to realize that you do your most important work when you have your most energy. Now for me, that's first thing in the morning. Uh, for, for other people, I know for my sister, that's later in the afternoon. But so when you have your most energy, do your most important work because willpower is not on will call. It is totally associated with when you have the energy within you to create something, to do something. So when we use it, the things that matter most happen. The third life is the myth of the balanced life. Mm. Now, balance ha has to be, happens to be a noun, but we actually really live it as a verb. We're always trying to balance our life. So we live in this world where there's, oh, so many things and so many issues that we could become important in and uh, a lot of our uh, ourselves or our children or our grandchildren, they're living in a world where it seems like work takes over their lives. So trying to live a balanced life is like living in the middle of some type of a whirlpool and you're trying to get yourself out of it. It really takes focus of what's truly important to us. And it also takes us to focus on spending our time in those areas. We live in a world that we get 24 hours in a day and we get to choose how we use them. And if we choose to spend 10 or 12 hours of those days at work, we're giving up something else because we only have a limited number of hours in the day. So how are we gonna choose to use those times, especially the times when we're awake in the most effective way? How do we balance what's important to us? James Patterson wrote in one of his books, imagine life is a game in which you're juggling five balls. The balls are called work, family, health, friends, and integrity. And you're keeping all of them in the air, but one day you finally come to understand that work is a rubber ball but all the rest of the balls are made of glass. Hmm. So if we dropped one of those other balls of family, health, friends, and integrity, it's gonna shatter. 
But if we drop the work ball, it will bounce back. Now, I'm not saying be irresponsible at work. Please don't say, well, my minister said <laughs> that I could be irresponsible at work because that ball's a rubber ball. This is all about balance. It's about you creating for yourself what you think are important things. I love that little plaque that says faith, family, and friends. Because for me, that's about what it's all about. I do appreciate health and integrity, but the faith, family, and friends says it for me. And because I believe that we're all connected and we're all one, really faith, family, and friends becomes the one thing that's the most important to me. Because there's no way that if I live in integrity, then I'm not going to stay connected with my family and friends. Then I'm not going to stay in the faith that I'm walking. I'm not going to walk, uh, that I'm going to walk away from the thoughts that I believe and let the weeds take over my garden. It's not going to happen. So in other areas, we want to realize that we want to live a balanced life by prioritizing what's important. What are the things that are important to you? Figure out what your glass balls are and what your rubber balls are that you're juggling and make sure that those glass balls are the ones that you pay your attention to. Not that you totally ignore the other ones, but that when you think of the one thing in a certain day that you're gonna do that's gonna make everything else either unnecessary or easier, it's going to include those faith, family, and friends for me and whatever else you said was your priorities. So recognize that there are some lives that live in our, in our lives and that we can go back and look at that, that we can learn to weed the garden of our souls, of all those negative thoughts, that we can use those wide brim hats and that water to keep ourselves healthy and we can use our friends to help us figure out where do we dig? Because sometimes our friends can tell us, oh, you know what? I don't understand why you don't think you're creative because you're really creative in a lot of ways. And so, you know, listen to your friends who know you because they can help you move through finding those weeds that are keeping you from living your best life. So I'm gonna invite you this week to just put on your gloves and weed well. <laughs> Realize that when you're working, work hard, and when you're playing, play hard, and have that saving grace to recognize what's the most important thing. Where are your glass balls? Where are your rubber ones? And what's gonna be that one thing that you do today that by doing it, makes everything either unnecessary or easier. Ah, so let's pray. So just taking a deep nourishing breath and moving into that space in our heart where we know, absolutely know that we are made of the stuff of the invisible. And allowing that to just expand and expand and expand connecting with that divine life that's love and joy and peace and calm and wisdom and intelligence and knowing that all of that lives within me and all of that lives within everybody on this planet. So what I know to be the truth is that when we align with the power of the mind of God, when we align with knowing that we are made of the stuff of the invisible, that all things are possible. That we find ways to move through the current situation, with whether it be health or finances or whatever it be in our lives, with ease and grace and a certain type of calm that's in the knowing that there is a light at the end of that tunnel. So I am so grateful. I am grateful to remind myself that the God without is the God within me to know that the God without is a God within every person on this planet. And it's from that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth, 
that God has already looked at this garden and said, wow, look at all the beautiful flowers. The weeds are going away. Hmm. So I just say amen. And we can affirm it together. And yes. so it is. So this is our time where I'm going to request that we uh, make a donation. There are ways to donate online. Uh, and uh, let's say, uh, let's do our offertory blessing. Can you donate since we're doing this on Facebook Live? There is a donate button on our website. Uh, and it's over here on the upper right-hand corner. Over here. And it allows you to uh, either donate online, or and it also gives you the address if you want to mail in a, a check. And we appreciate your remembering that this is, that our expenses go on while we are in this process right now of doing Facebook Live, and we appreciate your donations. Thank you very much. So we're going to circle up here for the people that are uh, on site here. It's nice to have a couple of places. To okay. And we're going to know that uh, just energetically we are all together. We are connected through our hearts that everyone that's part of this community, that part of the larger community, that anyone that's watching this particular uh, Facebook Live event is carried in our hearts, that uh, God knows who you are, and I'm praying for each of you, and I'm knowing that wherever we are, God is. So until we meet again, we're going to be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness and know that we are weeding the garden of our minds and our souls so that we live lives that are filled with love and joy. And if you want to continue to be connected, we're going to do a live discussion following this call at 1130. And uh, the phone number is here on your screen. And if you just call in and use the participant code, we can meet together online and have a discussion and talk about questions that might have come up for you that you might have asked me if we were in person uh, and just have a great time. So I'm hoping that you will join us on the discussion and knowing that oh, God is good and that there is this way of mastery that allows us to allow the flow of the mind of God to flow through us. And so it is. Thank you very much. See you soon on discussion.